Hi there, Matt Wade here, and today we are going to cover one of the most common questions I get when it comes to using Office 365. When should I store my files in SharePoint Online versus OneDrive for business? It's not just a frequent question, it's a good one. Oh, and if you use Microsoft Teams, this is especially important for you as well. So let's get started. SharePoint and OneDrive are both places for you to store files, but why do we need two places to keep stuff in Office 365? And how do they relate to Teams, seemingly a third place to store your files? Well, SharePoint and OneDrive have notably different reasons to use them, and you should employ them in the way that they're really meant to be used. Yep, that's right. You want to use them both. And it's not difficult at all to juggle the two. Once you know how to use them, you'll probably never go back. And if you're using shared files in Outlook groups, Yammer, or Microsoft Teams, you're using SharePoint Online in the background. The Files tab in each app is actually a SharePoint document library in the background, and you just happen to be accessing it and editing files through a different interface. But it's still a team site in SPO, plain and simple. So when I reference SPO, SharePoint Online, it's also applicable to files in Outlook Groups, Yammer, and Microsoft Teams. First, let's talk about what's similar between the two. OneDrive and SharePoint have the same underlying design and features. Uh, in fact, OneDrive is actually just a single SharePoint document library in a single SharePoint site just for you, but really just with a different logo. They both support many of the same features, uh, editing Office files, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote via Office for the Web, formerly known as Office Online, file sizes up to 100 gigabytes, co-authoring, simultaneous editing, version history, file sharing, both internal and external, mobile device access, and syncing files to your computers and phones. They're also both accessible from Microsoft Teams. SharePoint is the file tool behind a team and channel. OneDrive is what's used when you share files in a private chat. The main feature difference? OneDrive doesn't have metadata, and metadata, even if you love it, isn't really necessary in your OneDrive because you generally know your own folder hierarchy. Uh, and if you don't know what metadata is, that's totally fine. Just ignore that statement. So let's talk about when to use OneDrive. OneDrive is meant for personal storage, work or school related files, uh, but files that are personal to you. Each person in your organization gets their own OneDrive. Each OneDrive account usually comes with at least one terabyte of space. That's a lot. OneDrive is perfect for two types of files. First, ones that you only want for you, likely personal files that just shouldn't be shared. And second, drafts of files that you're not ready to move into SharePoint or into Teams yet for collaborative input or reviews. So if I look at my OneDrive, I have a whole bunch of folders at the top level. Uh, not many files. I like my files to be in a folder somewhere, but that's personal preference, right? I've got lots of slide decks from conferences. I manage my blog posts and videos in OneDrive, uh, my health insurance and benefits files for work, my OneNote notebook for taking general notes, and a lot of draft files for before I was ready to copy them to Teams to share with colleagues for input. So I like to keep the original copy of my files for myself and for like a history, but that's just personal preference. Now, you can collaborate in OneDrive, but I really don't recommend it. Sharing at the file or folder level quickly becomes a permissions nightmare. It's especially confusing with a group of people each sharing individual files from their own OneDrive as you all work on them. It makes things much easier if you upload and collaborate on files in a central SharePoint or Teams location. Plus, when someone leaves an organization, their OneDrive is typically retired within 30 days. So if your team is using that space to collaborate on something critical, you will not be happy to find out one morning that those files are gone. To me, that's reason enough to really not use OneDrive to collaborate too much. So basically, if you're saving files specific to you or drafting files you plan to move to SharePoint for input, reviews, uh, or simply make them available to your team, OneDrive is your place. If you don't meet any of these criteria, use SharePoint. So now let's talk about SharePoint. It's best to use in two ways, for collaborating on files with others and for publishing files for everyone to see. Team sites are great for collaborating while communication sites are perfect for publishing. Team sites generally have few users, but most, if not all, have editing access. You're doing work, so why hinder them with permission restrictions? Team sites are for getting work done. They're also the file location behind Microsoft 365 groups, including Outlook groups, Yammer communities, and Teams teams. 
Each member of the group automatically has edit access in that situation. So to put it simply, SharePoint team sites are for the team's stuff. Communication sites are usually accessible to almost everyone in the organization, but most people only have read access. You generally have a few people who have access to upload, edit, and delete published files. Communication sites generally make up your intranet. A good example is a corporate policies listing. The people who write and maintain those files can update the policies when necessary, but most visitors to the site are only there to read policies and shouldn't be able to edit them as much as they would probably like to be able to. So communication sites are for everyone's stuff. Now, when it comes to juggling the two apps, OneDrive and SharePoint, there's a simple set of guidelines to follow that I call the document circle of life. Feel free to start drafting your file in OneDrive for Business, and when you're ready, move your file to a SharePoint team site where colleagues will provide input for and review. You could also draft the file right in the team site and leave it there for the greatest visibility to the team and then call them out later to bring them in to review the file. When the file is completed and ready to be shared, publish the file to a communication site if it's meant for you know, wide distribution or to a team site you know, if it's something like a template for team specific documentation uh, or for your team to use later. Keep a working copy in your team site so updates are easy to make and kept private from the rest of the world while you work on your revisions. Now, all of that said, this is just a suggestion. It's not so much prescription as it is inspiration. Your organization may do things differently, but most of them use some sort of version of the idea as a foundation. So take the idea, run with it, customize it to your needs, and uh, you know, take it to your team to potentially discuss and see how you might improve how you all work. SharePoint, OneDrive, and their integration with Teams might seem complex, but to put it most simply, you'll find yourself bouncing between OneDrive, SharePoint team sites, and SharePoint communication sites. Me, we, us. Me, we, us. Sometimes boiling things down to being simple in Office 365 makes it super vague. But in this case, me, we, us works pretty well, I think. So hopefully you found that useful. You can find a link to the full infographic on the document circle of life in the video description. And I'm curious how you and your organization juggle OneDrive and SharePoint, and Teams for that matter. And if you'd like to hear more about my document circle of life idea, there's actually much more detail to the concept, but I wanted to keep this video reasonably short. Anyway, leave a comment below to share your thoughts and experiences and any ideas or requests that you might have for future videos. And hey, a like and subscribe is much appreciated if you found this video helpful.